Laser Mark pointer. Colonna and Enrico DeVito. And Dr. DeVito and I have been working together on this project for about four years now. Some of you have seen the, the uh, embers when we started the fire and we're about to throw the gasoline on the fire, so to speak. Um, uh, Dr. DeVito has been extremely busy with um, a lot of our research as of late, and, and uh, so he's brought to the table a whole lot more things than uh, we've had in the last few years to show you. So we're going to talk about um, using the laser and minimally invasive endodontics. I think we'll surprise you with some of the things that we're going to show you. Um, it's, uh, it's actually quite astonishing for us as well as we perform our research. But before we get started, um, I would like to... Uh, Thank uh, Laris Research for um, all of their uh, um, all their support and what they have done in the last year to uh, push forward um, our research. And also, um, I'd like to thank Global Microscopes for being here and providing the, the the tabletop scopes for us to use and the scope in the booth. I just want to talk briefly too about about the laser in general. Um, you know, as you know, I've been using lasers for about eight years now, and uh, Lasers are definitely have a place in dentistry, and hopefully those of you who are still kicking the tires and this is something that interests you, um, come talk to me about it because uh, laser dentistry, if they took the laser out of my practice, I would retire and go back on the Pro Bowlers Tour. You've heard me say that before, and I'd do that again in a heartbeat just because uh, lasers are what, is what has made my practice exciting, our practice is exciting, um, and uh, it, it really is, I think, the standard of care of the future in dentistry itself, and we're about to show you how we believe it's going to change endodontics as we know it. Thank you, Mark. You know, I want to start by saying one thing. First of all, thanks for all coming. I will tell you that Mark Colonna and Bob Barr were my mentors. Um, how many years has it been now? Six. Six years ago. Yeah. I was doing dentistry. Um, I've been practicing for 30 years, and I think I got to a point about 20 years ago that I really wanted something that would uh, invigorate me and, and keep my interest, and so I'd always uh, kept an eye on the laser uh, industry, and when I went to see him, I think Mark will tell you, I was a little bit... Uh, um, well, skeptical? Skeptical would be a good word for it, yes. In fact, I think he called me a heckler at one point <laughs> in the crowd. And uh, anyway, so it all started there, and I will tell you that even though I was skeptical at that time, I'm so glad... I, I came over to the other side because this is really where the future of dentistry is. And for all of you who have lasers or who are thinking about getting lasers, this is the next paradigm shift, so you should, you should really consider it. Well, we want to talk about PIPS. Yeah. And <clears throat> PIPS is um, what we call photon-induced photoacoustic streaming. And we're going to get into our discovery of that. We're going to kind of give you the evolution of how we got there. And then those of you who have probably seen some of this presentation before, but I'm going to also show you, Rico and I are going to show you how we, where we're at now and where we're at today. And it's pretty impressive and um, it's pretty exciting. So Rico, why don't you start on this? And okay, well, first of all, we, we took the basic principles of endodontics. You know, everything we tell you today, all the basic principles that you were taught in school still apply. What we're doing is probably changing the modality. So as you know, uh, the, for successful treatment, uh, you need to clean and shape, and then you have to obturate. Now, I've really, I've really condensed it for this, for this size of group, but bottom line is without appropriate uh, cleaning and debriding, it doesn't matter what you fill those canals with, they're not going to work. Um, determining working length has always been an issue. Uh, whether we fill to the geographic apex or to the anatomical apex, uh, using root ZX, uh, uh, locators, uh, electronic devices, x-rays, etc. Um, it still comes back down to if you can't clean the canals out, it doesn't matter. They're, they're destined for failure and retreat. I will tell you, after 30 years and several thousand teeth that I've done, it doesn't matter how good they look on the x-ray. If they're not cleaned out, they'll come back. If you live long enough, they'll come back. So you got to be careful. So that's what we're, we're looking at. Okay, working links. Uh, to ensure that all the bacteria are removed from the root canal system, uh, they have to be cleaned to some distance within the apex. Uh, is it half a millimeter short? Is it the actual anatomic apex? Is it the geographic? The biggest part that I want to zero in on is the average and length of these bacteria are one micron. Keep that in mind as we talk and move forward, okay? A great deal of variation existed as to how or where the canal terminates. And the only true way we found to determine the actual opening of these canals was to look at them microscopically. I will tell you that using uh, the, even the root ZX's, we had uh, 
variations that were anywhere from 0.3 to 3 millimeters. That is, even when your root apex finder told you you were at the apical termination, you really weren't, because there's a little bit of uh, problems with the frequency and the fluids that are there, et cetera. So, um, this, is the, this is the thing that gets me, Rico. Right you know, there. Th this is the reality of which we have to accommodate our techniques. Mm -hmm. And that's always been the panacea for me. It's always been a tough, tough thing for me to accept. So, uh, we use radiographs and we use apex locators. And as I told you, the accuracy of these apex locators were supposed to be about 95%, but the variation was huge in our studies from 0.2 to 3.8. And the real truth was that there was no clinical way to actually determine 100% where they were at. So that being a given, we, uh, we got to the point where, well, how are we going to clean these canals out? Are we, is there a way that we might be able to use lasers to better negotiate and to also render these organisms harmless? Well, there is, and we're going to show you. This actually was published in May of this year in the Journal of Endodontics. It was a study done on how to look at the canal morphology. Um, and you can see that the root canal is a system. It's interconnected, intertwined. It's very complex. We all know that. We've seen this in the literature. This is just recent, so I wanted to put this in the presentation. And you can see high percentages of fins and, and anastomoses and, and just connections between main canals and lateral canals and apical foramens. And, I mean, it's just a very complex thing. When you look at, the, when you look at your hand and you look at the work of, of the veins in your hand and you see how they're all intertwined and how they all connect, and similar to what happens in teeth, how do you clean those out? The only way that we're taught to clean them out is to just mechanically ream the living daylights out of these teeth and weaken them. What if you can, let me ask you the what if question. This is, this is the, uh, I'm a what if guy. What if you could suck all that out? What if you could suck every bit of the diseased tissue out, leaving behind a very clean and hopefully, we hope at some point we're going to show sterile, exoskeleton of a tooth, and then you can obturate that so that it's inert and it stays in the body and you haven't done any damage at all to that root system. Well, that would be ideal, Dr. Colonna. What that, if? Uh, isn't it? Yeah. What if? <laughs> what if? Is huh? it possible? Is it? Okay, so our team, uh, uh, my chemist crystallized these teeth, and then uh, Mark and I, <laughs> trying to hold it still underneath his uh, high-powered scope, uh, we could actually see the nerve in here, and as we placed the methyl salicylate, that was the particular liquid that we put on here, you could see how the nerve was starting to dissolve on itself again and be, became liquefied. And then as it starts to dry out again, you'll, uh, you'll see it start to grow. And just look at, the, look at the architecture of this root. Look at that. And we've done hundreds of these teeth, and what's interesting is there isn't one that's the same. There's not one that has a similar apex of another or apical exit. I mean, they're all different. Every tooth is different. Can every human being is different. Every hand is different. Every vein is different. Everything is different in each person. So for us to think that we can create a, an environment where we utilize mechanical um, rumors and such and come up with a cookbook, it's worked. I'm not saying it hasn't worked. It works. But is there something better? I think what we've done in an endo is we've done a great job of reducing the number of files it takes to treat these teeth and time from 20 down to 10. And now with the new GTX, uh, uh, they say two files. Can, you can almost prepare 90% of all these canals because they've standardized that. But the difficulty is they haven't done anything to address, I believe, effectively, other than a, there's a few products that are trying to do it now, a better way of debriding and cleaning these canals out before we Show fill you. them. Now, when you hear lasers in, in uh, root canals, uh, people usually think this. And I will tell you, the literature is full of people that think this. Watch. Oh, yeah, smoke screen. Smoke, smoke and mirrors and thermal. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it's about. And we're going to get to that point. We're going to show you why it's not that. See, I'm going to place the fiber in one canal. And I'm going to stream photoacoustically with pips the, uh, the fluid in the canals. And you're going to see all the debris just come out of the other canals that are surrounding it. And again, this is after filing. I would file conventionally using, uh, using I, again, I use a reciprocating AET system. Rico uses uh, something different, and we do that purposely. Um, and uh, if you place it in one canal, you get fluid coming out of the other. And you get junk, all the junk that's down in there, all the dental fi filings and EDTA or anything else that's down in there comes out. 